Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the Hood Table one more again. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the Hood Table. <laughs> You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Hop on YouTube, welcome to the hood table. Where we chop up local and global events vocally. You don't really wanna miss out on these conversations. Just joke a little, huh? Laugh a little, get that one of your system for your glass a little. Expose current events, talk, trash a little. You never know these opinions might clash a little. Get addicted to the content, got them binge watching. You don't like it, then you want invited. Bet your friends watching in the house and your job parking lot before you clock in. They don't wanna miss a second of this H T content. Everybody think they got something to say So it's an open invitation, bring it to the table But if you come whack, just know we ain't buying it We gon' probably turn it back and tell you something right hey. Yeah, welcome to the hood table You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable Yeah, welcome to the hood table You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable Ow! Hey, what's up, everybody? What's up? How you doing? Sorry that I'm a little bit late, but we have been having some issues going on. Oh, my God. I am almost canceled this live because right now I'm kind of discombobulated because I have a child who <laughs> missed their flight um, in Arizona. And after trying to get through to the supervisors down there and the people who work at the airport and oh my god it's just whew, i'm so frustrated right now I'm so frustrated right now with the airport with my son for missing a flight he talked about oh, we got here like an hour early i'm like how many plane trips have we been on as a family and we would leave like three hours early to get to the airport and we would be there like literally an hour and a half or two hours early and he's like well i'm like Never again. I'm never allowing my son to fly anywhere else again. I'm so frustrated right now. But, and then the next plane they said is coming out is nine in the morning. And they talking about they have to be on standby. I'm, I'm, child, I'm so frustrated, but I'm not even going to get into it all right now because we got to do this ruthless review. But don't be surprised if I come right back to do just a live, a random live afterwards to discuss this because I am so upset right now. Who child. And then my son is like, but I had fun down here, mom. I had fun. Nothing went according to plan for my son's first flight out of town. Mm-mm-mm. But anyway, anyway, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like and share the video. Subscribe to the Hood Table if you're not already subscribed. We are going to be reviewing Ruthless Season. Did I put, hold up, hold up. I messed up my little, hold on, hold on. See, y'all wasn't even going to tell me. Okay, Ruthless Season 2. Let me change the, on the bottom. Oh my God. Okay, I got it right in the video. I just don't have it right on the ticker. So I just changed the ticker. Okay, Ruthless Season 2, Episode 8, and it was called Small Little Lies. Now, anybody who has been keeping up with Ruthless, uh, especially up to this point, please feel free to let me know how you feel about this uh, specific episode or anything leading up to this specific episode, or any of the storylines that we'll be discussing tonight. And we got a lot to discuss. Y'all know I'll be thorough, so y'all might as well sit back, grab your drink, grab your snacks. Mm -hmm. mm, good old margarita. Ooh, wee, and it's strong. Mm. Oh, child. I need it, though, because I'm telling you the, the night I've been having. But anyway, like I said, I'll probably come back live and we'll discuss some of that other things that I'm going through right now. But anyway, as far as Ruthless, um, let's start off talking about uh, Paula, Zane, and Lacey. Okay. So last week, we were all anxious to find out to see if maybe Paula, Lacey, and some of the others might try to escape. Or was it even the right time to be trying to escape? But as we can see, the ladies still have not left yet. They haven't, you know, got up the guts to leave yet. But it, but to me, it's just not the right time. And Zane, she keeps telling them, I don't think you guys should leave right now. I don't think you guys should leave right now. Let's just sit a while. Because the last six that tried to leave, 
they was just murdered by the highest. They were just beaten and bludgeoned to death like the week ago. And all they were trying to do was escape. So me personally, I'm with Zane. I think they should sit it out, maybe wait a few months. Hell, wait a year. And man, when the highest came back after beating those people to death, all that blood, all them body pieces, flesh that was all over his body and all in his hair, seeing that shit right there, I would not be in no rush to disappear or to try to escape. But Lacey and Paula, they still have their mindset on trying to get the hell out of there. Um, they still determined to make it out and as soon as they can. But for now, the plan is to still... Um, use Lacey's, I mean, Lilo's car keys. We know Lacey still has the car keys. She stole them from Oliver. Um, the plan is to escape in Lilo's car. They still have no idea what is in the back, what is in the trunk of Lilo's car. And to me, Oliver doesn't even seem pressed, not in the least bit. He doesn't even seem pressed to try to find these doggone keys, the keys to Lilo's car, the key that he still got sitting out on the outskirts with Lilo's remains, his cut up main remains in the back of Lilo's trunk. He don't even seem pressed about that. But anywho, anywho, while the ladies were making sure to cross all their T's and dot all their I's before making their big break, they were also discussing what they would do, you know, as soon as they were to get out of there. And it was during that time that we found out that Paula is really anxious to see her mother, who she calls a holy roller or a Bible thumper. <laughs> Sound like mine. <laughs> Rest in peace, Sister Mary. But um, <laughs> had she listened to her mother, who warned her that the highest was pure evil, Paula would be safer at home right now. Or would she? Would she be safe at home right now? I don't know. Because while they were making plans, it also came up how when Paula was at home, her stepfather was repeatedly assaulting her sexually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, whether her mother knew it or not, that's up in the air right now. I don't believe I've heard anywhere throughout these two seasons that her mother was aware of that. Matter of fact, this is the first time that I'm hearing about this. But what we do know is that most people who run towards a cult, and this is even in real life, they are usually running away from something. And in, in Paula's case, it was most likely her running away from her stepfather. And I'm um, I'm not so sure, you know, but I feel like she probably assumed that if she left that environment, no more harm would come to her. She would be safer in the cult. They would protect her. You know what I'm saying? But was she ever wrong? Was she ever wrong? And to come to find out, Paula, Zane, and Lacey have all been tossed around by Lilo and or his political contacts, a.k.a. the senators. So I can definitely see why it is that Paula is steadfast on getting the hell up out of there. I just hope that when she gets back home, though, her stepfather won't be waiting on her, if y'all know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Stepdaddy, mm -hmm. but anywho, anywho, um, if you know what, um, I mean, y'all, you know, it could be a case where she left, the stepdad could have outgrown his nasty, evil behavior, or it could be where he's upset. You know how some people, when they be taking advantage of somebody so long, whether it's a child or an adult. When they get away and they come back to them, they be like really, really angry and really mean and aggressive and violent. So again, I hope she knows what she's doing by running back home. But in the meantime and in between time, it's still not the right time to escape because including Daikon, too many people were awake that night and wandering around the compound. <laughs> Everybody was up. When I say there was too many people still up, damn near everybody was still up, including Andre. And why about I say call him Andre? Probably because we've been talking about Andre Wright for like the last week. You know, the guy who was killed by the cop, Jennifer, up in, you know, Minnesota. But anyway, anyway, what I meant to say was Andrew and River. Andrew and River was up as well. And please let me know how y'all feel about this scene. 
Because River, who we know always seemed to be up to something, was acting really suspect towards Andrew. Like when River told Andrew all out the blue that some of us are living on top of us, on top of each other, you know, and some of us are under the houses. And some people are even dying up under the houses. Andrew was like, excuse me, brother. <laughs> you know how Andrew would be like, brother. Brother River, brother Nikon. He was like, excuse me, what did you just say to me? To which River clarified by saying, um, some people have died under the trailers. And then he goes on to say, usually this is in the summertime, though. You know, they be trying to cool off and they be under the trailers trying to cool off and they be dying under the trailer, which made no sense at all. Like, if it's cooler under the trailer than in the trailer, how are a lot of people dying under the trailer trying to cool off? It made no sense. And I'm sure Andrew saw right through it. I just knew right then and there that River had to have seen Andrew kill William. What do y'all think? Let me know. Let me know. Because to me, I think he might have seen him kill William, toss his body up underneath that trailer. Like, wasn't that like... Such a coincidence. He's talking about people dying up under the trailer right after Andrew killed William and threw his body up under the trailer. Was that not a coincidence? But as far as seeing him, do you think he really saw him? I don't know. I don't know. But something just ain't sitting right with me about that whole encounter between those two. And the fact that Andrew warned him that he ain't the one to be fucked with. Didn't even see the Shake River one bit. River was basically like, well, that makes the two of us. <laughs> he was like, that makes the two of us. Don't be playing in my face, and I won't be playing in your face. <laughs> but but anyway, y'all let me know again what y'all thought about that whole scene right there, because I think River might have saw something. I don't know, but we're going to get back to that in a minute. But anyway, for now, let's discuss Ruth and Daikon and Melinda. Um, Ruth and Daikon. Now, last week, we finished off with them. You know, Ruth, she was once again confessing her everlasting dying love to Daikon and telling him how much of a great person she believes he is. But Daikon wasn't with the shits this time. He was like, you have no idea who I really am, girl, telling her he's a whole monster. Then he showed her those six bodies that the highest had killed and bludgeoned to death. Um... Ruth, she wasn't even unfazed. She wasn't unfazed by any of it. She was like, I understand. It had to happen. It was the fate of the Raku. We must obey the Raku. So they must have been disobedient. And I guess them dying was their fate. So she was like, I get it. I understand. I still think you're a great guy. You're still an awesome guy. I'm still in love with you. I still want you. Ruth was really putting 20 on 10. She was putting 20,000 on 10. She told Daikon that ever since having sex with him, and mind you, that sexual scene between, damn, which one was better? Hmm. I still think the one where they was in the punishment trailer when she was beating on when she was beating on Zane and she was riding him at the same time. Anyway, 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 anyway. Now, um, she was like, ever since we first had sex, you're the only one that I be dreaming about. You're the only one that I want to be with. You're the only one I could ever want to be with ever again. Putting 20 on 10. But while Ruth was still trying to lure Daikon into the woods so that they could continue their conversation more privately, Daikon noticed somebody sneaking and peeking around the corner. That someone, of course, was Melinda, who she was just doing her job. You know, she was just doing the job that was assigned to her um, by Elder Mother Marva. Um, once Melinda realized, though, that she had been spotted, she took off only for Daikon to catch up with her and him her up against the trailer. And that is when he found out that Elder Mother Marva had ordered Melinda to follow and spy on Ruth. He never did really find out why, because she didn't tell him and Elder Mother, she didn't tell him either. But then Melinda's cell phone went off. Daikon was furious, like, okay, all the people on the compound that's supposed to have a cell phone 
it's like Daikon and the highest. And that's it. We haven't really seen nobody else with a cell phone or have permission with a cell phone. So he was like, who the hell gave you a cell phone? And then when he found out it was Elder Martha, oh, he was fierce because you know them two. They always clash and he don't like her one bit and she don't like him at all. So yeah, he was upset. And he was like, well, why the hell you got a cell phone? And then when he found out that she was having sex with Deputy Polk, Y'all, Daika was like, hell no. He was like, hell no. <laughs> and I just love, I just love how Elder Mother Marva and Daikon, they both believe that they are each, that they each are the highest on the totem pole when it comes to the highest. Like Daikon feels like the highest loves him out of the most out of everybody there in the cold and Elder Mother, she felt like the highest love her the most out of everybody in the cult. They both feel like each other's at the top of the totem pole. At least, you know, like right underneath the highest that is, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, who do y'all think do the highest hold to the highest regard? Mother or Daikon? Y'all let me know. But anywho, Elder Mother told him that Melinda basically had the phone so that the government man can call her. And the government man we know is Deputy Pope, the one that she's been sleeping with. But while Daikon was pissed at the fact that Melinda had a phone that she could possibly use to call Lois, because that's the thing right there. Not that she has a phone to keep in contact with this government man, but the fact that what if she was to betray them? What if she was to call the law, call the FBI, you know, report some of the stuff that they've been doing, and they have been doing a lot of illegal activities. Murder is just one thing that they've been doing out of a lot of things that they've been doing, and they did just murder like six people. So he was like, well, why the hell should she have a phone? But not only was he pissed at that, he was more pissed at the fact that because mother ordered Melinda to have sex with the deputy, Melinda is now ruined. But when he says that, does that necessarily mean that she was a virgin before Pope? Mm-mm. Nope. And as far as I can tell, when she was having sex with Pope, it didn't seem like she was a virgin. It didn't seem like it was painful. It didn't seem like it was her first time. It didn't seem like, you know, normally when we see these scenes in a story, a movie, or in a book, you know how it usually goes when somebody has sex with a virgin. You know, they they just dis display the signs. You know, you know, I'm not going to get all into that. But anyway, I don't think she was pure at all before she ran into Pope. But anyway, anyway, he said Melinda is now ruined. Now they can't use her along with the other virgin girls to pimp to Lilo and the senators. So both Daikon and Mother was like, well, let's both take this up with the highest and see what he got to say about it. <laughs> Mother's nerves was so shaken that she had to go to the kitchen trailer and pull her a drink, y'all. Mother had to pull her a drink. I can't think she was drinking. Wasn't it some apple juice or some apple cider or something that she had put some liquor in of some sort? And where the hell they get liquor? I wonder if they make their own moonshine. Because as far as I know, I don't think they... I know the highest being there smoking his nose out. He be smoking his nostrils off. But as far as drinking, I don't know if they really like drink liquor, liquor, if they be trying to make some type of concoction. But anyway, she was in there getting her drink on. Mother was really disturbed by how Daikon had been speaking to her. So she was like... um. I need to keep an eye on him. I need to report him to the... She don't trust him. He don't trust her. But, but, while she's up there all over Daikon, I think she had better keep a better eye on Tally. Did y'all see Yancey? Yancey gets on my nerves. I can't stand Yancey. Um, I think he's nasty. I think he's a creep, like a total creep. But um, anyway, Yancey, he done snuck up on Lee again, trying to lure her away to his bus, you know, from her trailer to his bus. But Tally still ain't trying to go there. But it have to, I have to wonder. It makes me wonder. After their first little rendezvous on the bus, 
Uh, I have to wonder if Yancey had maybe been throwing it down on Tally, would she have had a change of heart? I don't know. <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all think. I don't know. But anyway, as of right now, even with Yancey trying to entice her with information on her daughter, Tally said no. No, hell no, I will not go. So anyway, I just got to wait to see what's going to happen with that because I have a feeling that Tally is going to eventually give in. Mm, let me know what y'all think about that. But anyway, let's get back to um, Elder Mother um, and Daikon. So after Elder Mother and Daikon got into it, Elder Mother snitched on Daikon to the highest. She was complaining about not only how Daikon has been extremely rude to her, but also how he's been interfering with Melinda's assignments at the sheriff's office. Speaking of which, did y'all see how surprised Deputy Polk was? <laughs> That whole scene had me cracking up. He was so surprised to find out that the sheriff knew about him sleeping with Melinda. The sheriff was like, don't you see that that chick is playing in your face? And that ain't what he said. You know, he don't talk like that. But basically, we know Melinda is playing in his face. But the deputy, the sheriff was like, Man, that girl, what the hell she want with somebody like you? What do you think she sees in you? Why would she really be interested in somebody like you? And to me, I don't think Polk looks that bad. I don't know. He might be a little slow, but he ain't that bad on the eyes. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, the sheriff was straight clowning him as if he ain't nothing more than a little pooba in love with a con artist. And Melissa, Melinda, that's basically what she is right now. She's a con artist and conning him to get intel, to get all kind of information that they can and take it back to mother, who will then give it back to the highest. And in return, Melinda hopes, hopes, that the highest will enlighten her. She still has no idea. No idea what it really means to be enlightened by the highest. She really thinks that once she finishes her job and does it well, she will be enlightened by the highest. And that basically means she'll sleep with him. He'll make love to her. You know, there'll be one... <laughs> She has no idea that the highest would not go anywhere near her, but instead to be light to means to be, have a train basically run on her by like seven, eight, nine, eleven 11 men. Mm -hmm. She has no idea. But anyway, anyway, let's her, let's let her keep believing. Let's let her keep believing. That's how Ruth been doing it. Like, okay, little girl. All right. You shall see. But anyway, anyway. Um, when Poe tried to reach out to Melinda on her cell phone, he got no answer. Why? Because Daikon had taken the phone away from her. So I'm very anxious to find out how this situation will pan out next week. Will he eventually get in contact with her? Will he get the phone back? Will she get the phone back? Will she call him? I don't know how it's going to... Mm -hmm. Because right now, Daikon got the phone. So anyway, um, back to Daikon. He had later been summoned by the Hyas. The Hyas had requested that Daikon stop being so rude to Elder Mother Marva and also to stop referring to her by her government name. You know how she said the government man. That's her government name. But uh, Elder Mother can call him all kinds of names like bitches and shit. Like, she be disrespecting Daikon, calling him by his real name, his gutment name. And on top of that, she be calling him females. And him. he say he act feminine, act like a girl, calling him bitches. You know, all kind of shit. He ain't never once reported back to the highest that elder mother was getting out of line with him. But she did. She's a, she's a whole snitch. <laughs> she's a whole snitch. But anyway, um, Daikon, he was in his feelings. And it was like, I think he was feeling like his opinions um, don't matter. His feelings doesn't matter. And even when he apologized to the highest and asked to lay with him for the night, the highest turned him away. He turned him away. He told him basically he was tired. That's the excuse he gave him, that he was tired. He was like, the highest do get tired sometimes. You know, we do get weary, you know. So he turned him away. Daikon was in his feelings, and he was... Once again, asking 
has River taken his place? Now, this makes like maybe the third time he's asked the highest, has River taken his place? Daikon, he knows that the highest used to love laying with him at night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lane. Um, but the highest, you know, he tried to assure him again, again, that nobody could ever replace him. But even after the highest had been repeatedly telling that to Daikon, I'm now finding it very hard to believe. And I'm sure Daikon is begin beginning to feel the same way because when was the last time that Daikon actually laid with the highest? River is always there. Mm hmm always there. <laughs> but how do y'all feel about Daikon's feelings? Like, let me know how y'all feel, if you think they're valid or not. But the, besides the way he feels about that, I don't think that's the most pressing issue right now. After making his request to Daikon, the highest informed Daikon that Andrew was right all along. It was then that Daikon found out that Andrew had murdered William. But hear me out, y'all. Hear me out. Please hear me out and let me know what y'all thought about this storyline. <sighs> Daikon found out that Andrew had murdered William for allegedly believing that William was either going to kill the highest or he was going to run to the sheriff, run the town and report things that was going on, you know, all the illegal activity up at the cult. But we all know the real truth. Andrew killed William because William was going to rat him out because he found out that basically Andrew was a mole. He was working undercover. He was really not there because he was being loyal to the cult. William found that out, and when he took off to go run and tell the highest, that's when Andrew killed him and tossed his butt underneath the trailer. But was I the only one? Now, I could be reaching. I could be reaching. So I need y'all input. Was I, was, the, was I the only one who felt like what Andrew did to William was much more serious than Andrew understands? Like, when Daikon demanded that Andrew show him where William's body was, why did I get the feeling that William was more to Daikon than what meets the eye? Like, do y'all feel like William might have been maybe, possibly, related to Daikon? Like, could he have perhaps been, like, his little brother? Or closer than that, maybe his son? I don't know. Daikon was really upset. He was really upset. And I guess if you look at William and you look at Daikon in the TV world, they could be related, you know, the TV world. But um, I don't know. Y'all let me know how you feel about that uh, scene. But besides all that, when Daikon told Andrew to look at where William's body was supposed to be. Andrew was like, I don't want to see it because Andrew just killed that boy. He's like, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. He was like, look, look, look. He was trying to force him to look. And then when Andrew finally turned his head, we never got to see there because then the show went off. So again, let me know what y'all think about that scene. Um, I'm pretty sure that William's body was not there. I got a feeling that William's body had been moved. But by who? Was it moved by River? Because let's not forget that River had told Andrew earlier in the show, which was, what did he say? Sometimes people die up underneath those trailers. Remember that? Remember that? So, I don't know, y'all. Could River possibly have seen what Andrew did to William and then move the body? And if so, why would he move the body and not say anything? Like, was he trying to entrap Andrew? Try to maybe blackmail him or something like that? I don't know. I don't know, child. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this whole episode. It was a lot going on, y'all. A lot going on. And when does the next episode come on? I think Wednesday or Thursday? It'll be episode nine. So I'm looking forward to finding out. Where did William's body go? 
I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to if Lacey and Paula is going to end up trying to escape. And I'm also looking forward to as far as uh, Melinda. What will Pope have to say to her after finding out that she has possibly been playing in his face? <laughs> So let me know what y'all think about all of that. Everybody who comes in late after the show, make sure you put all your comments in the comment section. And also, please don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the Hood Table if you're not already subscribed. And be safe, be blessed, remain vigilant. And as always, don't forget to keep it hood. Bye.